I'm Stuart Shepard. This is, you stole my chair. I don't see your name on it. You know, this whole Supreme Court fight is summarized in this one tweeted photo. The protesters brought fill-in-the-blank signs. Qualifications, experience, temperament, none of that was ever going to matter. This fight is not about who it is, it's about who gets to choose. Here, look at this headline from the New York Times. The nominee for the stolen seat and the Los Angeles Times. When the GOP stole, there's that word again. So the East Coast and the Left Coast have agreed on a narrative. Okay, let's go with that and see where it leads. If the seat was stolen, it raises the question, stolen from whom? The New York Times assumes it belonged to Mr. Obama. The LA Times says it belonged to Merrick Garland. But I found a more reliable publication called the U.S. Constitution. It spells out exactly who, to use the same language, owns Scalia's seat, the President and the Senate equally with the same weight. The president nominates, the Senate offers advice and consent. Both must happen before anyone gets a seat. Here are some clarifying questions you can ask your friends who appear to be having trouble with this balance of power. Would you agree the president can choose the date to make a nomination? Would you agree that a president in his final months of office could if he wanted to, choose to allow the next president to nominate someone to the court. So why attack the Senate when it uses the same level of authority to choose when to act? And consider this. Would you agree that when President Obama saw that the Senate was not happy with his nomination, that it would have been within his authority, if he wanted to, to nominate someone like, say, wait for it, Neil Gorsuch, an eminently qualified, highly experienced judge of remarkable temperament. Not whether Obama would, just whether it was within his authority. Because that illustrates why the founders granted ownership of Scalia's chair to two branches of government, to force them to work together, and they both chose not to. Now a mom would send them both to their rooms, which is essentially what the voters did to one of them in November. So when you hear the talking heads with the the fill-in-the-blank posters griping about the stolen chair, just remember, you can't steal something you already own.